Summer was almost over. George and the man with the yellow hat came home from the park happy, but tired. <sighs> you guys have fun in the sun? <laughs> we played an extra long game of, sorry I didn't mean to kick that over your head. George won. That was probably our last game of the summer. Summer's over, George. The weather will be turning cold soon. We'll find out exactly how soon tomorrow on Whistle Pig Wednesday. You've never heard of Whistle Pig Wednesday, George? Here, Mr. Glass wrote this book about it. <laughs> yes, that's a whistle pig. <laughs> Are you hinting you want to read that now? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about Groundhog Day? <laughs> well, groundhogs hibernate. That means they sleep from fall to spring, all through winter. <laughs> they don't live in houses like us. They live in burrows, which are holes they dig underground. <laughs> On February 2nd, the groundhog wakes up and looks outside. If it sees its shadow, it goes back to sleep. Because winter will last six more weeks. Around here, we call groundhogs whistle pigs. Since we didn't call them groundhogs, we couldn't have Groundhog Day. <laughs> Back when Mr. Glass was seven years old, he met Sherry Whistlepig in Endless Park. They had a fun day. The next day was the last Wednesday in August, and he went to her home, which was a burrow in the park. Sherry saw her shadow and got scared. She started hibernating right away. Young Mr. Glass noticed the weather turned cool that very day. It was the start of fall. So Mr. Glass created Whistle Pig Wednesday. Since then, he goes to the park very early on the last Wednesday of every August and brings his friend Sherry out to check her shadow. Ah. If she sees her shadow, summer is over. It's like Groundhog Day, except it's about when summer ends. Oh. Ah. That was the kind of story that makes a monkey think about shadows. How come George's shadow didn't predict when the seasons changed? Was a whistle pig shadow different from a monkey shadow? Aren't all shadows the same? Can you lose your shadow? Now he had two shadows to compare. They both looked the same, except one was shaped like a monkey and the other a dachshund. George explained that both shadows moved over stuff the same way, and neither one predicted the weather. <laughs> oh? But Hundley had a dog shadow. To see if a whistle pig shadow was different, he needed to see a whistle pig shadow. Hundley never really noticed a shadow before. It looked dirty. Another day, another bag of trash. That trash is not trash. Huh? 
We need to separate our recyclables from genuine trash. Huh. The city's having a contest. The apartment building collecting the most recycling wins the Golden Triangle Award. Ooh. <laughs> so recycle, George. It'll make the planet and our trash a lot neater. <laughs> Recycling sounded like something George would want to help with. <laughs> Once he found out what it was. <laughs> uh-huh. Recycling can make those bottles and jars in the trash into new bottles and jars. Without it, they just pile up in garbage dumps and take up space all over the planet. <laughs> Hey, you want to go to the recycling center and see exactly how it works? <laughs> We're making an impressive start. <laughs> hello, Lydia. Oh, hello. Um, I lost a bottle there. Every little bit counts. She must really want to win this contest, Hunley. She wouldn't even let one bottle get away. Hi. Um, he wants to see recycling in action. Well, who knew recycling was catching on with monkeys? I like it. <laughs> this triangle on the bottom of a container means it can be recycled. <laughs> First, containers need to be separated, then cleaned. <laughs> Glass is broken into bits, then melted down to make new containers. Plastic works the same way. Recycled newspaper makes new newsprint. <laughs> Think you're ready to start recycling? <laughs> now you can help with the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Three cans, and it's not even noon. <laughs> I bet Lydia hasn't even gotten a bottle cap. <laughs> All right. Uh. Oh, maybe it's not going so well. Uh. If their doorman needed recycling, George was ready to get to work. But nothing was empty. <laughs> Filling up the almost empties meant more stuff for recycling. Discouraged.
George loved playing outdoors. But lately, the weather wasn't cooperating. When he wanted to play ball, it was too windy. When he wanted to fly a kite, it rained. Hiya, George. <laughs> and when he wanted to splash in puddles, it didn't rain enough. There we go. George was tired of the weather messing up his fun. Tomorrow, he was going to be ready for anything. Are you all right? <laughs> Gee, it looks like you're ready for any weather from snow to sunshine. Everything but fog. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've heard that some animals can instinctively predict the weather. I guess you're not one of them. If George could become an animal who could predict the weather, it sure would make his life easier. <laughs> Do you like it? I call it Red Sky at Night, Sailor's Delight. Huh? Oh, there's no sailor, it's just a saying. Sailors learn from watching the sky that if there's a bright red sunset, the next day is usually nice. <laughs> If sailors could predict the weather from watching the sky, maybe a little monkey could too. So George decided to draw pictures of all the weather he saw, starting with the red sunset, and then the warm sunny day. And he added that he met a cricket. <laughs> the next morning, George drew the dark clouds that filled the sky. He also drew the cricket again, but drew fewer noise lines because the cricket had less to say on this chilly morning. When it rained in the afternoon, George drew that. So clouds meant rain. These were turning into very useful drawings. The next day, the clouds looked very different. Hey, George, it looks like a great day. You want to go to the park and have a picnic? George loved picnics. But he didn't want to get caught in the rain again. And clouds meant rain. But I thought that... Oh, okay, we can eat here. Ah, all done, George? Boy, what a great day, huh? But there were clouds. It should have been raining. Unless, maybe only dark clouds made rain. Little white clouds didn't. George had canceled a fun picnic for no reason. Steve and Betsy had never seen the country. So the man with the yellow hat invited them for the weekend. is the country. Big skies, green pastures. Oh, oh, wild animal. 
cows. Sheep and cows aren't wild, Steve. They're domesticated, like Charky. Huh, Charky's pretty wild. I think I'd rather chase a cow around the city. <laughs> wow, that's the shortest apartment building I ever saw. It's a house, Steve. <laughs> left the books at home. There's so much to see, you won't have time for reading. <gasps> Whoa, Charky! Hmm. Huh. That's a rainbow. And see the gold at the end? And the leprechaun? <gasps> oh! <laughs> Rainbows are always the same colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. <laughs> I can make a rainbow. Want to see? <laughs> I make my rainbow without the sun or the rain. The flashlight is like a sunbeam. The water in the fishbowl is like a giant raindrop. Ooh. The light shines through the water and behold! A rainbow! <sighs> <laughs> Betsy's rainbow was nice. <laughs> but George wondered if he'd ever see one that spanned the whole sky. Hey, so what wild animals can I get pictures of next? Well, we've got skunks, squirrels, a moose or two. A moose? Now there's something you don't see every day on N Avenue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All done. There's your lunch. You're ready to go see the country. <laughs> I'm going to town to buy food for dinner. Hmm. It's only supposed to drizzle, but if it rains a lot, head home, okay? George knows the way. Betsy, wait! I'm not leaving without a moose picture. Holler if you see a moose. <laughs> Rain? Do we have to go back already? Mooseless? No, it's gonna stop. Look, the sun's already through the clouds. <laughs> Amazing! That's the biggest rainbow I ever saw in person. <gasps> I can't get a picture with all those trees in my way. George didn't see any gold at the end of the real rainbow from here, so he'd just have to go there. to be doing this, and it was too big a job. <laughs> George had really wanted to spend the night in an igloo. <laughs> and maybe he still could could build his igloo right inside the house. 
a smaller igloo. It was nice and warm. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. Oh, it's freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. is off. No wonder it's so cold. Oh. <sighs> Seven o'clock. The badge is mine. Ow. We did it, George. Uh-oh. George? Hi, Bill. Are you sitting down? Um, no. Okay, I don't want to alarm you, but George is not in his igloo. Don't worry, he's probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? Uh-huh. You were cold outside. So you thought you'd build an igloo inside. Uh -huh. huh. Makes sense. For a city kid. As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. Ah! Wow! There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> wow, thanks. And that was the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. <laughs> Open every weekend until it melted in the spring. <laughs> hey, just in time. Uh, could you grate the carrots into the batter and put it in the oven while I change my shirt? <laughs> I guess they should make aprons that cover your arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, then would you slice the cucumbers into the soup and put the apples in the fruit bowl? Thanks, George. <laughs> Hey, I think we finally have things under control. <laughs> what is that awful smell? <laughs> George, uh, thanks for finishing the soup. It smells <sighs> strange. Is this a cucumber? Mm. It tastes like eggplant. <laughs> it is eggplant. So what did you put in the carrot cake? <laughs> mm. is, it, is this some kind of radish? <laughs> radish cake and eggplant soup and a smelly fruit bowl. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> George couldn't understand it. How could something that tasted so good in the store taste so bad in the soup? I'm sure you could make a good soup with eggplant, but this was a recipe for cucumber soup. <laughs> well, we still have 
Oh, ten minutes. Oh, well, I guess we should just order takeout. <laughs> Where are you going? George? <laughs> Customer number one, you are back. And I think I know why. You dropped this on your last visit. Oh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these pictures of carrots, cucumbers, and apples? <laughs> yeah. See it now? Way to go, Dad! Tell me, my friend, are those the vegetables you have been looking for on your visits? <laughs> Let me get them for you. <laughs> you don't want them? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, nothing like a hard day of analyzing carbon isotope ratios to give a girl an appetite. Hmm, something smells weird. Oh, that's my uh, radish cake. Really? Yum. George, <laughs> perfect uh -huh. timing. George, is that your name? Uh -huh. Hello. I am Win Kuang An, owner of the Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. This is my wife, Hua, and daughter, Mai. Oh, well, hello. Hi. He named the store after us. It means peach blossom. Is that the new Vietnamese grocery on Inn Avenue? I've been looking forward to your opening. Oh, me too. Is all this from your store? It is. We thought we should help George carry in his order. We've brought you eggplant curry, bun tit nung with nuk kiam, a fish sauce with daikon radish. Ooh, I love that sauce. Bitter melon soup, sa hat lo, which is pomegranate seeds in coconut cream and durian shakes. Mmm, it all looks great. And there's so much. Uh, would you join us? Huh? We would be honored. <laughs> A few days later, George headed back to Hua Mai. Ooh. Here you go. Ah. Hi, look at all our takeout customers. Someone's been talking. Me. I told everyone I know about how great the food is, and I know a lot of people. Don't worry, George. You'll always be customer number one. <laughs> he was going to need a bigger windmill. Luckily, George knew a perfect place for finding things. The recycling room. <laughs> What did Mr. Coyote say? If you're building a windmill, you need sails. A sturdy base. Something for the sails to spin around. And something to make the scarecrow move. Now that he had the windmill parts, he just had to put them together. Time to take those sails for a spin. But his windmill stopped short. So George gave his windmill a leg up. Four of them. <laughs> when you're making a windmill, it's easy to get wrapped up in your work. So George gave his sails a trim.
his sails moved, but his windmill didn't. What was he missing? When the wind blows, it pushes the sails. And then George realized these were too loose. So he got more sticks and attached the sails with tape. George could push his sails, but the wind couldn't. <coughs> Mr. Coyote's sails were stiff. Maybe that gave the wind more to push against. <coughs> so George made his sails stiff. his windmill needed now was a scarecrow mover. <laughs> At last, his windmill was finished. And it was a good thing, too. Huh? Because he was out of tape. Now he just had to wait for the wind. <laughs> and get a wait for his windmill. Scarecrow move. But he did feel bad for Compass and his friends. <laughs> now the pigeons could eat their food while George grew his. good, two were even better. Because when you're somersaulting, you need a soft spot to land. Uh -huh. Okay, we've got our match. What do we make next? <gasps> I know! Hey, Leslie, can we borrow some of your fence for our balance beam? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna put it on the ground. That way you can do gymnastics, too. A balance beam shouldn't tip. When George learned to ride a bike and it tipped over, the man put on training wheels. Maybe his beam needed training wheels, too. Only without the wheels. <laughs> now, if only we had some rings. <laughs> some rings were too small, and some were too big. Some rings were just right. <laughs> huh. Where did the towels go? <laughs> Maybe you 
should do abominable exercises. They make your muscles stronger. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten. One more than ten. Two more than ten. Now, we need a pommel horse. That was going to be a tough one. It'd have to be the right height. Too short. Too tall. And it shouldn't tilt. Once George had a handle on things, he added padding because safety is one of the three S's. Yes! Way to go, George! Ah, ah. Wow, you guys built this yourselves? Well, it was George's idea. He's pretty smart for a city kid. Yeah, and wait till Mrs. Somersault sees us next week. We're gonna be so gymtastic! At the next class, George couldn't wait to show the teacher what they had learned. You guys are amazing! Are we gymtastic? You certainly are, but how? <laughs> we found another gym. Yeah, and it's open every day. <gasps> every day? Do you think maybe we could have classes there? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. We know the owner. And he's a natural at gymnastics. <laughs> Don't worry, George. Your duckling will adapt. This is Bill, signing off until tomorrow. The next morning, George was eager to see how his duckling was doing with his new duck family. Here we are, on day two of the Duckling Chronicles. Look at that! The fourth duckling is with its... Oops, spoke too soon. <laughs> Duckling still thinks George is its mother. George had to show the duckling that monkeys are one thing and ducks are another. <laughs> you make an excellent duckling, George. This was getting nowhere. George decided to try another approach. Farmer Life magazine? How is that going to help? Ooh, ooh, ooh. George wanted to show the duckling that in a typical duck family, there aren't any monkeys. <laughs> That wasn't working either. Maybe if George showed him how to act, the duckling would get the idea. It looks like George is trying the make like a duck maneuver. <laughs> Help! 
to get this on tape. You're watching Dumpling Duck saving her baby like only a mother duck can. And so, the ducklings were brought together by this daring rescue and by the kid from the city who helped to hatch them. Fantastic! Marco's grandmother's birthday, and Marco was planning a big surprise dinner. He had an assistant to help out. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, his assistant was a monkey. <laughs> Don't worry, George. It's just a masa. We have more. <laughs> See, masa. You know, cornmeal. That's what I used to make Marco's famous tortillas. See, there's lots of... Uh, uh-oh. I thought we had more. <laughs> if there was one thing George knew how to do, it was to fix things. <laughs> this was the first time he'd broken food, but he knew where food came from. The store. Masa? Oh, I am so sorry. I just sold my last bag. Ow! But I promised my grandmother I'd make tortillas for her birthday. She was so excited. Plus, it's the only thing I know how to make. Hang on. I think you're in luck. The delivery man is here. Hey, it's Uncle Enrique. Uncle Enrique, it's Grandma's birthday. Your abuela's birthday? Muy fantástico! You're going to make your famous tortillas, of course. Of course. Ah. Only... Huh? Only? We're out of masa. Oh, no! No masa, no tortillas. But it turns out you're in luck. You have masa on your truck? Do I have masa? Come on, do I have masa? Ah, uh, no, actually I don't. But I know where you get some. Yay! We'll have your masa in un momento. You're not going to believe this warehouse. Si, si. That's where packaged food in the store comes from. Trucks like mine get food from warehouses like this and deliver it to grocery stores all over the city. Boys, prepare to be amazed. It's one of the biggest warehouses in the city. It has everything. If they don't have masa, nobody does. Don't got it. What? Sorry. You're telling me that in this whole entire warehouse there isn't one bag of masa? Not one? I've had calls all week, still waiting on a shipment. Unless... Huh? We had a pallet that came down one bag short last week. I think maybe it fell off up there. All the way up there? <laughs> if anyone was an expert on up there, it was George. Hey, lucky one of us is a monkey. <laughs> the warehouse manager was right. There was one bag of masa left. Marco's birthday surprise was saved. George, you did it! Wait, 
George, don't try to climb down with a bag in your hands. Just toss it. <coughs> toss it to me. Just toss it down. I'll catch it. Just toss it. Okay. I'm ready. Let her rip. <laughs> Watch out! What? <gasps> Sorry, I was talking to... Uh, can't see. Uh. Uh. No, no. Uh. 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 よし、これで。スリーボール ただしこの後のベースが変ってくり。庭のフェンスに。青い巣箱。レンキンスさんの牛。そしてホームベースのおじさんに滑り込み。セーフ。牛にもちゃんとタッチしたか。ってへ。今のジョージのヒットでどう
くって天才だ待ってろよジョージ君には長いストローを作ってやる<笑>こうやってどんどんつなげていけばいいんだできたぞこれで届くだろう<笑>ストローがこれだけ長いとレモネードを飲むのも一苦労やっと口に入りましたあれまだ出てくる吸ってもないのにどうしてストローが勝手にレモネードを出し続けます、うん、さあまたプールのところに戻るぞ綺麗な水に入れ替えて涼もう、うん